Well, hello. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my panic attacks. Um, I've mentioned that I do have those, and there's been a lot of requests to talk, have me talk about it, what I do to control it. And they started probably back when I was about five years old, had a couple of them, and, but mostly they started hitting hard when I think I was about 16 and I was just, I just panicked about things and, and it didn't help when I, I was 13 years old and I was in charge. I got, I went to babysit for some ladies. There, there were three ladies and went to babysit for them and I wasn't supposed to babysit for one of them, but they sent another lady in and I was so excited to go babysitting. So one of them came into the house and said, uh, do you want to babysit? And, Anybody want to babysit? And I said, I do. And I ran out the door. And my, I didn't even tell my parents where I was going or nobody knew. And I, uh, when I got there, it, the three ladies combined their, um, all their kids. And there were 15 children. And the oldest was 12. And I was only 13. And the, they had a baby. And there was no food in the house, no diapers. And I found a can of soup and watered it down. And I found a paper, uh, not a paper towel, a, a dishcloth, and put that on the baby for a diaper. And eventually they all fell asleep. And finally, about five in the morning, they came home. I guess they went to a bar to meet some guys, and and they took me home. And my mom and my mom and dad and all the kids were outside, out back looking for me, and couldn't find me. And I got five dollars and for ten hours work. And I, I just never babysat after that. It was just really weird and. Um, and then I, that's when I developed my fear of, of babies. I just did not want to babysit. A baby would cry and I'd go, no thanks, I didn't want to do that. And then when I got married, I'd have panic attacks whenever anybody wanted me to babysit. And I just thought, oh, they're not going to come back. And and I'd get panic attacks about getting too far away from home. And, and I got them real bad after my second child was born, Rochelle. And it lasted about three years, and I just would wake up at night just in these panic. I wouldn't even have anything to be afraid of, and they would just hit. My panic attacks would just uh, hit hard, and I'd go, "What was that?" And I just I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was having a nervous breakdown. And uh, finally, one night after about three years of this. Um, then Davy was born, and then Julianne, and um, after about three years of this, I heard, uh, 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 well, I had had a dream that, uh, well, before, when Rochelle was a baby, I, I'd ha have these panic attacks, and I was really worried about being a mother, and if I could do it, and, and um, I had this dream that I was walking along, and all of a sudden, uh, somebody shot me. I got shot. It didn't hurt or anything. And I knew I got shot because I could see myself being raised up above the house. I thought, I think I'm dead. And I thought, well, who's going to take care of Johnny and Rochelle? Um, so I thought, well, I really don't want to die. I want to be the ones to take care of him. So all of a sudden I just woke up. And I thought, boy, that was a scary dream. I says, I, I want to be around for to raise my kids. I don't want somebody else to do it. And I thought just that maybe this is just going to be how my life is. I'm just going to have panic attacks. And back then they didn't know what they were. This is 40 years ago. And they didn't know what they were. And so I'm, you know, I don't say anything much about it. And, uh, you know, if anybody did know, they would say they'd pray for me and stuff. But after about three years, uh, I remember hearing Tony Robbins talking on on the TV or radio or something saying how our minds are like a record and we play them over and over in our, our mind when things when we hear things or when things happen and what we need to do if we want to erase a memory or want to erase something like our panic attacks you got to scratch the record you've got to You've got to stop making it a pattern. So like when I'd get the panic attack, instead of being afraid and panic and just, oh, what do I do, you know, and just start breathing fast. 
then I'd have to break the pattern or scratch the record by doing something different. Like, like he suggested, you jump up on a table and start clucking like a chicken. Of course, I didn't want to do that one. But I would, I would just do something different to try and scratch the record and, and uh, you know, do, do something like uh, try and um, maybe go out back and uh, ride a bike or maybe do some jumping jacks. And, and so I finally pulled out of those panic attacks by doing that. And then the panic attacks didn't come back again till Jimmy Joe was on his mission. Oh, I went ahead and had a few more kids, had six total. And we had boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. And we sang, and I seemed to be doing just fine. And Jimmy Joe would have a few panic attacks when he got maybe about six years old. And I helped talk him through it and tell him to slow down his breathing and stuff. And then when he went on his mission to Cambodia, I... For some reason, I worried about him. I worried if he's going to have panic attacks. And, w and when I started worrying about that, it must have triggered something in my brain, panic attacks. I'd totally forgotten about him. And then I started having panic attacks again. So I thought, well, by this time, people started knowing about what they were. And they were calling them panic attacks or whatever. And they thought, oh, you need to get on medication, but I don't believe in that. I thought, I'm not going to take a pill for that. I can I can do this. And I, I had um, heard about a guy called Charles Linden, and I thought, well, I'm going to buy his tapes. And, boy, he really helped me. And he, he told how it's it's not real. It's, it's just in your head. And you just need to slow your breathing down. And because and, when you start panicking, you talk, you breathe real fast. And so I, he would have this tape that I would listen to, and um, uh, that would just slow my breathing down. And I'd even wake up at night having these panic attacks and breathing fast. And so I had to learn how to slow my breathing down and and just know that they're not. It's just something in my head. There's nothing to be afraid of because I could, I would just be walking into the kitchen all of a sudden have a panic attack. There's no reason to be having a pat you know be having that uh intense of fear just walking into the kitchen and so that's just how i've been working through those and and it they can happen to anybody there's movie stars the singers i think of donny osmond he would get his panic attacks and um there's quite a list of famous people that have them and it happens to men too not just women and the first thing Charles Linden's tell Charles Linden Charles Linden tells you to do is to go off medication, and, and so you don't do the medication. Papa O just came inside to push pause for a minute. He doesn't, you know, want to talk about. He doesn't. He doesn't want to talk about it with me. So, um, but that's just basically what I've been doing. And I, uh, one thing that I really have a hard time with controlling my panic attacks is um, I don't like to travel far away from home. Uh, I'll go maybe if it's within a five hour drive or four hour uh, but anything beyond that I get really scared. I just can't do it. Like when I need to go to Oregon uh, Jimmy Joe will fly me there and that's only an hour and a half flight so I can do that, but if I have to drive 12 hours, I can't do it. I it's it's really hard, and uh, so I just don't travel anywhere. I I go and do a lot of things, but I don't travel if it's far away and stuff. But I don't know. That's just kind of how I handle them now. It's the main thing is the breathing. To slow your breathing down, you breathe in really slow, and then ho counting to nine or ten. And then you hold it, hold your breath for about nine or ten, and then you let your breath out really slow. And that's the main thing that helps me with my, with my uh, controlling those attacks. And uh, I guess I just have to live with them. I don't know why they're so bad now, but I, I will. I refuse to take medication because you hear so many side effects. I think no, I don't want to be bogged down with that. I'll just have to deal with them, and and I. 
uh, when I hear about people that have had a, had the panic attacks, I take the the material that I got from Charles Linden and I pass it around. So I've passed it around to nieces, nephews, cousins, siblings. Um, I don't know, they seem to be quite prevalent nowadays. And some people, the, the majority of people, I, I tell them, you know, don't do the medication, but some want the medication. So uh, if that helps them, then and that will work and I try and talk them through the panic attacks but uh, sometimes they just want to do the medication so but that's just kind of a little synopsis of and maybe that'll help somebody out there I know there's a lot of people that have them and they don't know what to do but um, my main advice is no medication and do your breathing and if you can get the Charles Linden uh, look him up. He he used to have the panic attacks and he learned how to work through them. And his suggestion is, like if you're afraid of flying, you just fly a lot until you're not afraid anymore. And, and like with me, traveling, uh, I should do it a lot. Maybe that would help, but traveling costs a lot of money. Um, so I'm quite content just staying where I am. But... Um, you could look him up on YouTube, and he has little snippets of advice and stuff, but he had, oh, I think panic attacks for 30 years, and, and uh, but uh, I just thought I'd share that with you guys and not take too much time. Hopefully, oh, I, I don't know how long I've been talking. Anyway, so make sure, you, you know, to comment below, and maybe I can... Um, uh, give you some advice or help you and um, because it's no fun living you, you know no fun having those attacks but they are fixable you can get through them and you don't have to um, I know a lot of people end their lives because of, cause they don't want to deal with it anymore and we don't want that to happen life is wonderful you don't want to have to go that route and there is a is a way to take care of them. So comment below and let me know. That rhymes. Make sure you like, comment, and su subscribe. And welcome to all the new subscribers. And thank you and good night.